it was a grenade injury to my stomach and my right leg. I took a shot in the leg and head and uh, up down left side of my body. I was struck in the right shoulder and it went all the way through my chest and to my left armpit. My right ankle got hit with that, it broke the talus bone and I only have 10% of my ligaments left in that thing. The first thing when most of us are injured, we get out and we say, hey, I, I don't want to leave my brothers. I don't, want to, I don't want to be out of the fight. Put me back in it. Even though I'm missing an arm or a leg or my brain's halfway falling out, I want to be back in it. I was a soldier, so if I soldiers over there, I can soldier over here. And it, this is the bigger battle. I know it is. I feel it every day. It hurts. It hurts on the inside. It breaks me down. I feel like I'm dying inside. There was no way I could have got through a day without somebody physically helping me. The doctors even told me, you're pushing this recovery too much. You can't run yet. Don't go to the gym. I mean, I was going to the gym on, on crutches you know, doing upper body stuff, and they said, you cannot do that. But I was 20 years old at the time, you know, this, in my head I kept thinking, this isn't, this isn't what's supposed to happen. I had to leave my job because I got deployed, and then I got hurt, so I couldn't go back to my job. And I was, that's what I said, I said, what, what, what am I supposed to do? And I'll never forget, it was a full bird colonel down at D.C. at my med board, he said, well, that ain't, that's not our problem. Our problem is why you can't be a Marine. Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays, all were in the hospital. And it was kind of like, he wasn't the same person. He just kind of was blank, didn't really, just didn't really care. And then it was like times he would, you would see him laugh, but it, it almost kind of felt like it was forced because he was interacting with somebody else who wasn't taking it as bad as he was. I would say after he starts like coming around other people and seeing other people that were like him or worse, more worse off than him, he kind of understood that I still have something to live for, I can still be happy, I can still do things. And then when he started realizing that and accepting that and speaking to other people, he started to get back into his old self. They told my wife they didn't know if I was gonna live. Uh, so I, from what my wife tells me, it was, I mean, the worst moment of her life. All I thought was like, what now, God? That's all I thought was like, what now? What more can you give me now? It's really helped me get over that transition phase and out into the civilian world and my life without being in the military or my life being injured. And so it helped me push forward and um, become a civilian again. I get to see it from the fact that I got blown up and, and, and almost lost my life to appreciating those that are still serving to understanding that there's 5,000 plus in the grave that don't have that opportunity to see or do what I'm doing. Yeah, I'd like to be over there still in the fight. I'd still like to be, you know, I didn't want to leave. I wasn't supposed to be the guy that got hit with the mortar round. I was, I'm the corpsman. I'm the guy that's supposed to be fixing Marines. Mm -hmm. But I gotta let that go, man. Somebody else has that now. And for me to break away from that was, uh, was difficult. But once I did, I, I really needed to grasp everything that I could care-wise.